You thought we were done talking about the Wizard's Vault and Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure. Well, think again. Hi everyone, and welcome on back to the channel. We have yet another blog post talking about the Wizard's Vault, and this time they go into much greater detail and give screenshots of what the Wizard's Vault will look like and some of the rewards you might be able to get if you so choose. So today, let's get into it, talk all about it, and also show off some trailers in the background. The first part is known as Astral Allies. It reads, the Wizards are largely unknown to the denizens of Tyria. That'll change, at least for you and the Commander, next week, when Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure launches and you get to start on the new adventure we've been preparing for. As an ancient, arcane, and acquisitive lot, the wizards have amassed something of a treasure trove. For reasons best known to themselves, our guess that they don't often leave their towers, the wizards have set up a system through which enterprising adventurers can earn astral acclaim by completing certain tasks and trade that acclaim in for rewards from their vault. They've even set it up so that exchange works whether you can physically reach their location in skies above Tyria or not. Behold, the Wizard's Vault UI. This is actually really beautiful and really sleek. I love the new icon at the top left. You know, triangle, mystical symbols, and magic is all really beautiful. And this TLDR spoiler is going to be replacing our daily login rewards and I believe also daily achievements. This is going to kind of smush everything into this new package and make it to where you are a little bit more responsible for the items that you want to get. You're no longer going to have that daily login system where every time you log in, you're going to get a predetermined piece uh, gifted to you each day you, you log in. This is going to be something where you have the choice to focus on getting those mystic coins or focus on getting those transmutation charges or various other items that you'd get through the daily logins and those achievements. We have a little bit of a preview with the weekly tab, and we have complete five structured PvP reward track tiers, complete any strike mission, complete the dark reverie jumping puzzle, and then world versus world, complete the obsidian sanctum jumping puzzle, and defeat 10 world versus world invaders. Now for weeklies, these seem pretty easy? I don't know, this, this doesn't feel like a weekly um, selection. That was my one critique. Complete any strike mission. That feels more like a daily that you could do. Um, and then maybe it cycles to, com you know, defeat a raid boss, defeat or complete a fractal, something like that. Um, so these are not really reading to me as weeklies. Complete five structured PVP reward track tiers. That does read a bit more weekly um, in terms of maybe the amount of time that it would take. So that's the only one that kind of made sense for the weekly category but the UI is looking great I love the art on the background of the weekly and the chests I wonder if the chests are just going to give astral acclaim or if they're also going to give something like 50 silver a gold um, if it also is consolidating the daily and and you know, the new weekly achievements kind of um, but we're gonna get more into that with the next section new ways to earn rewards by directing players to various parts of the game with regularly refreshed challenges and rewards, the Wizard's Vault system functions similarly to a seasonal content pass in other games. But we tried to build the Wizard's Vault from the ground up to be as player-friendly as possible. Exclusive cosmetics don't go away at the end of a season. You can choose your reward order, and there's no cost in gems or real money. Ultimately, our goal with the Wizard's Vault is to help you find things to do in Guild Wars 2 and then reward you for doing those things. Some of the choices that we made about the foundations of the system mean that it is a substantially different experience from many seasonal passes. Reward Choice As you complete Wizard's Vault objectives, you earn Astral Acclaim. Astral Acclaim can be spent to buy specific items offered in the Wizard's Vault. Rather than unlocking specific items at specific tiers of progression, you can choose which rewards you want to acquire. Reward Longevity The rewards in the Wizard's Vault rotate every few months, but any cosmetic rewards introduced through the Wizard's Vault will remain available. When they're no longer part of the most recently updated offerings, those rewards will go into a Legacy tab of the Reward Shop, where they'll remain available for purchase for Astral Acclaim, although at a higher price. Our goal in doing this is to alleviate player anxiety about timed rewards. If something comes into the vault when it's not a good time for you to be playing much, it'll still be there for you later. 
and rewards for gameplay. We do not want to have a premium tier of the Wizard's Vault that has additional rewards, and players cannot buy Astral Acclaim with gems or real money. That is all great. It's just kind of bullet pointing the layout and the philosophy of the Wizard's Vault, which they have previously kind of outlined in their other blog posts. But we also get to see the first in-game rendering of the mount that is going to become available through the Wizard's Vault, which you can purchase by, I imagine, saving up a lot of your astral acclaim. It's the, I believe, the Arcane Griffin. And it's just so beautiful. It's so blue. It's so magical. It looks just seeping with, with maybe some ley line magic. I don't know what's going on, but it looks really beautiful. And continue the article with, for this first round of exclusive cosmetic rewards, we have the Enchanted Owl Griffin skin, a new weapon skin collection, and three unique armor pieces. Other items in the Wizard's Vault shop, in-game currencies, crafting components, and more will be available through gameplay. One item bundle we're debuting is a legendary starter kit, meant to provide a new inroad to the legendary crafting system. These starter kits are a way to turn your playtime into progress towards a specific legendary. We're introducing starter kits for four legendaries in this first round of offerings and intend to rotate in others in the future. We'll be watching feedback and usage to inform future iterations of the starter kits. I'm really excited about all this. This just seems like great content and material input to reward you for playing the game. You're given a checklist of dailies and weeklies to work on. You then gain more rewards and you have more agency over those rewards. So all in all, I'm really excited about this system. And the next part is gameplay direction. One of the goals for the Wizard's Tower as a system is to give suggestions to players looking for something to do in the game. To that end, we have daily, weekly, and special objectives related to PvE, World vs. World, and PvP. Those three categories are presented as checkbox options, so you can choose from one, two, or all three categories. In addition to the daily and weekly objective refreshers, special objectives are refreshed each season when the Wizard's Vault rewards cycle. The Wizard's Vault replaces the existing daily login rewards and daily achievements, specifically the generic daily category. Other categories like daily fractals, daily end of dragons, etc. will still be around in the achievements panel. You'll continue to receive progress towards Daily Completionist by completing Wizard's Vault Daily Objectives and achievement points from the Wizard's Vault Daily Completionist achievement. So as they are confirming, the daily login system that we know now is going to be retired and baked into the Wizard's Vault. So I assume we're going to be seeing many of those similar daily login quests to kind of transition into this Wizard's Vault system. That being said, I do hope that there are newer ones and maybe some that have been retired because they might not have been as popular. Something a little bit more exciting to get you out and playing the game and doing events and various expansion zones. And I hope that it's not just Central Tyria. I mean, the, even right now, the dailies do incorporate the other expansions. So I'd like to see just see a little bit more of that and also like fractals and raids and strike missions. And but I cannot help but be excited for this, and I'm particularly uh, interested to see how this will refresh my excitement to log in day to day and play the game. I was someone who did work on dailies for quite some time, and then I got hella burnt out, and I haven't really done dailies in probably a couple years. <laughs> so that system has not been of any interest to me. But now that we're getting more agency and rewards and new rewards, I'll probably be completing my dailies and weeklies whenever I can. Once one of your characters reaches level 80, the Wizard's Vault UI will be accessible to all characters on your account, regardless of which expansions you own. If you do not have Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure registered on your account, which you can by using my link down below, some rewards will be locked, and you'll be unable to visit the in-game location of the Wizard's Vault. The system will be fundamentally the same for you otherwise. We'll be keeping an eye on feedback for what we can do in the future to continue to improve the system and bring fun new rewards and experiences to you. Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure launches on August 22nd. Gotta check out the Wizard's Vault in game. Conquer the sky with your sky skill and fight training masteries, hunt down the demonic cryptus and more. So if you haven't already, you can go down in the link in the description of this video to pre-order Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure. Thank you so very much. I'm gonna read a partner that link helps me out greatly. Um, but yeah. 
if you are a normal Guild Wars 2 player that might not have Secrets of the Obscure or, you know, you don't have some expansions, because this system is replacing the normal daily login system, it's going to be accessible for everyone. And you'll still be able to spend your Astral Acclaim just through the UI instead of having to visit or getting the option to visit the in-game Wizard's Vault to speak with NPCs. Maybe there's some lore there. It just creates a more maybe organic roleplay experience for players. But you still have that convenience of being able to accumulate Astral Acclaim and then spend Astral Acclaim on items that you want. And that was the blog post. All in all, not gonna lie, it felt like most of this information we kind of already knew, but this specific blog post did give some more details about some of the items that we'll be receiving. They showed off the in-game rendering, they showed off, which was probably the biggest thing, the UI of the Wizard's Vault. And they, in the blog post, talked a bit more about certain items like legendary starter kits, weapon skins, armor skins. And another huge item that they did talk about is the replacement of the current daily login and daily achievement system that we know it now and how it's being integrated into the wizard's vault so yeah i mean there were a couple new items within this blog post but it really did kind of feel like a rehash and a re rebrief of what we kind of already knew about the wizard's vault how it was designed in a way that took elements of a um seasonal content battle pass system but reconfigured it into the most player-friendly thing that Guild Wars 2 can do. So, props to a mama. But with that said, that is pretty much the end of this video for Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure's Wizard's Vault system. In the background, you've probably seen the trailers that have been playing for the Skywatch Archipelago and Amnitas. It's just so beautiful. I didn't really make a, any specific videos on them, just because I felt like they were nice map showcases, but... It's just more so the visuals and the assets that, you know, they use to create these zones. But they were very nice. I liked it. It was really nice. I'm just waiting for another trailer. Like a proper gameplay trailer and a release trailer. But we must be patient. We must be patient, family, because we only have a week left until we have Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure in our arms. And if you have not already, as I said, you can pre-order using the links down below. You can also subscribe get notified of when I post videos and you can over support over on Patreon get early access to videos and some exclusive content every now and again. Thank you all so very much and I will see you all in the next video talking about some more Guild Wars 2 probably and or some other games that I've been playing recently. Alright everyone, bye!